It's a project that is very close to our hearts here. Why don't we correct our own behavior as a road user? The shift in behavior has to happen at the systemic level. Passing this act into Rajya Sabha, we will get the right and we will definitely going to improve the situation. The goal is to save lives. But the life that he is living today... 100,000 here, 100,000 there. But the point is that the number is huge enough and we cannot continue to ignore it. Prevention is obviously a, a key aspect of all of this. Uh, when you decided uh, in Diageo to get uh, involved in this project, and you've done this now for so many years, how was it essentially with the goal of encouraging prevention? Uh, you know, uh, how is that central to, to what your company believes in? And, and you know, I mean, that's what we want to partner with you for, that reason, that we're sending out a message. So I think uh, for Diageo, uh, Road safety is a global agenda. Uh, we have more than 400 such partnerships in about 50 countries uh, working on the road safety. Uh, in India, it's, it's a very uh, peculiar case uh, because here, uh, when we look at the data and the numbers which we are talking about, they are, they are really very bad and very sad in numbers. So last three years, uh, the focus definitely, uh, we will keep focusing on responsible consumption and never drink and drive campaigns. But what we, when we look at the data, I think uh, there are many other factors which we cannot ignore as, as corporate. So, for example, uh, uh, more than 60% uh, accident happens because of overspeeding in this country. About 8% are overtaking, which is all behavioral aspect of a driving. Uh, less than 5%, which is reported, is, is drink and driving. So all these three put together is about 75% of the avoidable accidents or avoidable f fatalities and all that goes back to what uh, the Mr. Krishna Prasad was saying about attitude and behavior while you're driving you're behind the wheels so that's one aspect of it I think the second uh, aspect is the accountability and the ownership at the highest level I just want to draw a quick parallel to uh, to the deaths that happens because of AIDS in this country uh, there are about 2 million people living with AIDS and about 70,000 people die because of AIDS. For the last almost two decades, we have a National AIDS Control Organization, NACO, but we do not have National Road Accident Control Organization in this country. So I think there's high time that at the highest level we put that commitment that we have a national level uh, road accident control organization which will have state chapters, which will have district level chapters, there will be KPIs to those chapters to, to bring, at least not bring down first, contain the number of accidents which are happening. Uh, coming back to the prevention, because being a consumer goods company, we are at a vantage position where we, we are closer to the consumers. So we could drive programs which can prevent such uh, behaviors, which are irresponsible behaviors. And I think that's where the journey continues sure. uh, this, in this partnership also. Sure. Geetam, you know, you heard the, the minister speak a little while earlier on on, um, on design uh, of roads and, and what he is doing. How in your experience? In, uh, in my understanding, actually engineering is the key. In fact, uh, I would start with even when you quote these numbers that 75% are all behavioral issues. And earlier you also raised this issue that what about poor quality of drivers? In fact, the safe engineering principles start from three important cornerstones. First, that people will make mistakes. So we have to design our roads not for good drivers. We have to design our roads for bad drivers. We have to design our roads because we are vulnerable. We cannot, uh, we cannot tolerate impact energies beyond 30 kilometers per hour. Our body is not designed for that. And that's why we have to design vehicles differently. Now, since we have a lot of people outside the vehicle, we have to design roads differently. So engineering is absolutely the key even to alter behavior. Because when you drive, the roads speak to you. you. Next time you are driving on a road, which is a wide road and straight, and there you put a si speed limit sign 50 kilometers per hour. Just watch yourself. Will you drive at 50? or the road, the feedback that you are getting from the road is you can drive faster, it's very comfortable. The vehicles can go at very high speeds. So current safe thinking, in fact, earlier what uh, Raki was mentioning about systems thinking 
it evolves from this understanding that people are people will make mistakes we are vulnerable and then what can we do to change our uh, bring down this number but how do you deal with roads which have already been built now our oh, cities no, are no. all all built up i mean mm, it's, a lot it's a disaster no no not uh, not at all i i think i would la rather be little fantastic bit more please disagree on there. this yes no, how no, because uh, the even in the existing roads many things can be done and starting point is you know let us do careful safety audit keeping these principles in mind and what are these principles two main things come out number 1 control speeds control speed by design first all enforcement is very important all training is important however if you are looking for the lowest hanging fruit let's change the road design and very simple things that delhi police did in last 3 4 years if you noticed on uh, they had identified 10 uh, major places locations which they said were black spots because from their data they were finding yeah. there were clusters of uh, crashes happening so they just went and put rumble strips actually i remember even discussing with police at that time they said i can't wait for pwt to make a foot over bridge here anyway foot over bridge bridge uh, most pedestrians don't like to use it, so yes. he just went and uh, did rumble strips and that had an impact immediately absolutely if you look at delhi numbers from 2012 they have been consistently coming down despite car numbers going up yes and despite having high speed roads hmm. now and also some locations if you see where there is no what is called th this is called active speed control measure the moment you remove it you are increasing the risk so uh, that's just one example and i'm sure there are many more yeah um i just want to go back to uh, to mr nitin gadkari um sir um traditionally in india if you had the money to buy more expensive cars uh, you were buying safety and if you couldn't afford to buy an expensive car uh then you know you could buy a cheaper car but in the process you would be less safe within that car and this has been a problem that's existed for such a long time because uh those car manufacturers who have very small margins they decide to cut out safety features which in fact don't even cost very much uh, necessarily uh what is your government doing to to change that attitude among car manufacturers actually frankly speaking uh, frankly frankly speaking i am not going to compromise with the safety of the people and uh, we have decided that it is economic car luxury car at whatever the essential preventive measures for safety that is to be implemented and that is our policy we try to convince them but now it is mandatory everyone has to obey the law and because we do not to play the life of the people either it is economic car or luxury car whatever the safety measures essential safety measures it is now we are making mandatory already there so i feel that from atwell manufacturing point of view our our responsibility is how, responsibility is how we can save the life of the people in the road accidents at the same time we are not going to compromise with anything for just 10 to 30 40 000 rupees of less price we will not compromise with the life of the people either it is a small car or a big car where everywhere we are taking preventive measures for road safety which are essential in manufacturing of automobile cars piyush one of the key points that that you have focused on in the past in fact uh, the save life foundation played an instrumental role in in uh, encouraging people to being good samaritans how is that now part of the law uh, and how is that making the lives of people easier if they are to report car accidents or any accident on the road So in uh, 2012 uh, we filed a PIL in the Supreme Court uh, stating that um uh, bystanders and passers by were hesitant to help primarily because of fear of legal and procedural hassles and that the court ought to lay guidelines to uh, to insulate them from these kind of hassles. Now in 2015 uh, the government of India did issue guidelines which were uh, you know ordered by the Supreme Court uh, but we didn't see any implementation of that. We didn't see that the states were actually adopting any of those guidelines. so we we went back to the supreme court and we said can you exercise your special powers to make this a law of the land and what the supreme court did on 30th of march 2016 was to under article 141 issue a judgment that essentially converted these made these uh, these guidelines binding on all the states and union territories of india and made this a law of the land so as on date as of today if you were to help an injured person on the road 
you are completely insulated from any kind of legal or procedural hassle. If you don't want to leave your name at the hospital, you don't have to. If you don't want to be a witness in the case, you don't have to. Uh, it provides widespread protection, and it, it, it also uh, uh, you know, provides for action against officials who don't follow these uh, guidelines. The big challenge, though, is that the word about these, this new right that people ha have uh, has not really gone out you know, extensively. In the last year, we have trained about 3,500 police officers in life-saving skills. And I can tell you that not a single one of them was aware that they have this new responsibility as part of this, uh, this, uh, you, you know, the Supreme Court uh, judgment. Mm. So it's a, it's a big challenge, and I'm glad you are bringing this up in the program because at least through this way, uh, you know, at least some people will get to know about it. But what we are doing is, uh, is that on our part, is that we've set up a small website uh, called GoodSamaritanLaw.in. Uh, which is primarily for people to report violations. So if you've been harassed, if you have been detained by a hospital or you've been forced by the police to, uh, to share your details, you can actually complain to us. Technically, it, you know, it's, it's that action on the part of police or hospitals is contempt of court. And we are actively taking action for the cases where we do find out that there's been a violation. But getting the word out has been a big challenge for us. And that is something that uh, you know, we are looking to, uh, to expand sure. uh, you know, over the the few coming years. Raki, just the last question to you. Um, he was talking about the law and the Good Samaritan law, but what about um, uh, first responders uh, knowing basic things like CPR? I mean, CPR is not, uh, you know, it, it, it's not rocket science. Um, you know, when we talk about education, do you believe that we need to expand the scope of our education just to tra train, for example, children onwards in basic CPR? It can help anybody, not just in road accidents, but in any circumstance? It, ma it makes a lot of sense. But just to add to that, we have to train them in CPR, but we also have to train them in what road safety actually is. You know, we have to train the children and people in the entire gamut. Um, CPR helps. Yes, of course, CPR helps. But again, if the news hasn't traveled to ground level, even if you know how to do CPR, people are not willing to do CPR. Mm. Uh, because, you know, you don't want to be in a situation where you say that because of what you did or because of what I did, the situation became worse or the person died. So that mindset needs to change. Um, someone who's giving CPR has to be comfortable and, some, and people around have to be supportive of what they see, which is still, I think, a big problem within, you know, the way we You, you had a point to make? Yeah, just very quickly on that. You know, uh, two recent incidents internationally. One was uh, that in 2009, the cavalcade of the Dutch Queen was attacked by a car, uh, you know, vehicle, and several people were killed. But all those who were saved were saved because they got immediate care from passers-by and, 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 and bystanders who were able to give CPR, control bleeding, immobilize the C-spine and all of that. And the second was the Boston bombing. Majority of victims who were saved were actually saved on the scene because of the care that they got immediately. So bystander care actually can play a game-changing role in changing outcomes. And I completely agree with you that it has to be made a part of our system. Yep. Uh, and in most of these cases, in most countries, it is at the children level. It is at the level of uh, you know six, seven years of age when people actually start learning these skills on how to save a life. And it's not just on the road. You can actually end up saving a family member in the house as well once you have these skills uh, you know, with you in the house. It just amazes me, and on a slightly different note, it's 2018, we still don't have driver's training in this country, in schools. Isn't that, isn't that outrageous? We talk about changing our curriculum. We talk about vocational training. Um, uh, but we don't talk about driver's education, where people Actually, don't drive in this country. Uh, this yeah. is a little controversial, because let me share with you a result of a very interesting study. This was done in US, because there, that's, that was the first country where driver's education became compulsory in high school. And uh, after a few years, this is mid-70s, uh, so uh, this Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, they did this very careful study, and it's on their website also. So they compared children who have gone through this high school compulsory education and children, because how were children learning before that? Of course, all of us like us, learn from your parents or relatives who are willing to spend some time with you. Uh, so that's how m most of them were learning. And they found that in fact, the children who had gone through this compulsory driver education had higher incidence of invo getting involved in crashes. So this is one of those very counterintuitive results. People are very uncomfortable. Then they actually explain what happens, actually how you become a safe driver. So learning just the basic mechanics is important. That does not necessarily make you a safe driver. Safe driver you become by experience. 
and that is why if you see the current US laws, they have a graduated driving licensing scheme. Teenagers, you know, because they are teenagers, they are risk taking, they like to take risk. So, so I completely agree with, with, with Dr. Tiwari, uh, you know, on the fact that experience plays a key role. Uh, what we have seen in India is that experience comes, you know, after you have trained the people on basics. I, I've also been trained in India on how to drive and I've also <laughs> been trained in the US. And the huge difference is that in India, people don't even know basic technicalities. I don't know how many of your audience actually knows what a three second rule is, what a 65 yard rule is. How many people actually know how to spot blind spots? So before a person actually gets into the graduated driving license system, it, you know, into the stage where they're being observed, they have already been taught these basics physics, you know, the, the basics of speed, the basics of stopping time before they are actually sent into that space. So the challenge is that we have to do a combination of experience and basic technical knowledge and basic skills beyond just how to operate a vehicle. Because I think a lot of times people don't know that when, when we say maintain a safe distance, what does that actually mean? You know, Or lane so, driving, which yeah. is impossible to enforce. And we seems. don't want them to learn from experience about that because then it might be too late because they might end up interacting with a truck carrying protruding rods. So I just I just want to quickly uh, go across because we are completely out of time on this program to Mr. Krishna Prasad one more time. Sir, how do you get people to drive in lanes in India? Okay, again, this is what I was talking about attitude. We need to do a great paradigm shift in the culture. The road culture, which is absolutely absent, is what is to be brought out. And how is that you and me, when we go to US or Singapore, we stick to the lane, but when we come to Hyderabad, in our own city, the city which you love, you don't want to stick to the lane. So this is all about the culture. So this culture comes about only, again, by changing the attitude. We need to do massive, large-scale, repeated, periodical education or awareness creative programs in the country. We need to tell all of us that we love India, we love our city. That is the only thing. We have to bring a cultural change. Uh, we bring about a cultural change. Um, how is this campaign, I mean, just putting it across to you, what are some of the changes that you have seen in attitudes? Because, you know, in the years that we've been doing this, we've had many of this. We've done at least a dozen programs like this, in addition to stories. Uh, and we've run our campaign online as well and on television. Ha has this made even any impact or are we just all sitting here wasting our time? No, I think it, it has definitely uh, made an impact. I think it has made impact at uh, two, three levels. Uh, one is that uh, through this uh, partnership, we've been able to bring this topic uh, in the conversation in the top of mind. Mm -hmm. So I think it's there in terms of realization and we had that chat uh, earlier. But I think converting that realization in, into an attitude and a behavior is a ne next step, which we call city on the hill. That's the uphill task. And I just want to make a point here that, uh, like we're saying that Good Samaritan law, people are not aware about it. I think it's high time that our uh, Honorable Prime Minister runs a uh, man ki baat on road safety also, because it's not being really talked about with that kind of a commitment at a highest level. And I think if that goes well, in that, if we talk about Good Samaritan, I think people will listen to that because it has outreach to millions of people and people follow that. So I think using this platform, I want that we should engage with PMO and have a road safety man ki baat uh, in the next man, pe man ki baat. Yeah, absolutely. You had a point to make? Yeah, I think we all, majority of us suffer from the this cannot happen to me syndrome. Yeah. We have been long seeing these billboards don't drink and drive for ages now. So much so that they are hard coded in our minds that ye to mujhe dekhna hi hai. but we land up ignoring it. I think the mode of aware, creating awareness has to change. We have become resistant to this mode of awareness. Perhaps the new mode of awareness should be, can I make that particular person you know, step in the shoe of somebody who has lost somebody so close to him or to her. To see what, to be in that uh, emergency room of a hospital at 12 in the midnight wherein so many accident victims are brought on the stretcher. I think we need to seed that concept in their mindset why you need to buckle up, why you need to wear a helmet before you step out, why you should not be driving at a particular speed because you may land up killing somebody else's love story tomorrow instead of yours then. 
So the whole modus operandi to create this awareness should also change, and on a very emotional level. That's what I think. You know, I agree with you completely. But there's no good way to end a program like this because it's, let's face it, it's not a happy subject at all. It's certainly not uh, in our country. But, you know, throughout this campaign, again, it's, it's the fourth year of this DRGO NDTV campaign. We'll keep bringing you stories from different parts of the country and just plead to, 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 to all of you. And, and, you know, I mean, we're all part of the same, on the same boat uh, that, you know, road safety is important. Uh, the way it hits lives, it's incredible. Until it happens to you, you may not know. Um, go beyond the statistic uh, and just contribute not just for yourself and your family, but also for citizens around you. Thanks very much for being with us. Goodbye.